in this video I will unbox and test this video and photo camera. Stay with me if you're interested. Hello to you all. Um, filming a model railway is, um, well, sometimes quite difficult. You have to film at a close distance. Um, the light is not always that easy um, to get on camera. And, um, well, I have been filming with two cameras mainly. Uh, my iPhone 6s Plus, uh, which I use now to film this uh, video. And uh, this one, a Olympus uh, camera. Um, well, it's it's quite old. It's um, I think around ten years old. Um, I am quite satisfied with it. Um, it it is a Olympus S Z sixteen. It has a manual uh, lens, um, you can get things closer, uh, analog, uh, not uh, digitally, which is an advantage in comparison to an iPhone, um, especially to my older iPhone. Um, so that's okay, but um, there are a few buts. First of all, you can't uh, very easily control the focus, so it's... Um, often going out of focus because on a model railway um, if you want something to film something a bit further away um, the focus might get fixed on something that is closer um, so that's 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 not very well and the second problem for making videos is that the sound is mono there's uh, no stereo microphone um, that's the second problem and well, there's a third problem as well. It's only filming HD and full HD, so 1080. Uh, it's only filming in 30 pictures per second, which is not 30 frames is not enough to get a fluent uh, video when you are running model trains. So they tend to go a little bit, well, not sharp, let's say. Yeah, the details uh, are not uh, visible on the movie, only if you run them very, very slow. But, well, very, very slow. Just even on a normal slow speed, um, it's not very sharp. So it's a very good camera, really. It was excellent for its time. 10 years ago it was a, a very good camera. Um, I'm using it now for two years for my model railway, um, but um, well, I want to upgrade really to fix these uh, few issues I've just mentioned. So that's why I bought this one, a Panasonic DC TZ90. Uh, well, I it's it's so it should solve these issues which I have mentioned. It's got um, more frames per second. Um, it can even shoot in 4K, but not on uh, a very uh, not on more than 30 frames per second. But it can shoot at HD and um, 60 frames per second. Um, it has a stereo microphone, and it's possible to fix a focus on the touch screen. The old Olympus didn't have a touch screen, this one has. So let's see what's in the box. Right, first of all there's the usual paperwork. Lots of paperwork, I guess it's in uh, different languages. Um, yeah, French, Dutch and probably English. And then the warranty and all this kind of stuff. So, then what's further in the box? Um, there's a battery. Um, okay. There's um, a charger. There's a cable. Seems fairly short. And there's uh, something to well, put on the camera to put it in your, fix it in your hand. Um, and here's the camera. 
it's um, very well protected. All right, here it is. First impression, it's fairly heavy. It's it's well, it's almost the same weight. It is, however, a bit different in shape. It's a bit bigger. Well, however, if you consider this uh, part, then it's the same. Um, well, it's maybe not that much of a difference, a bit wider. So, it shouldn't be a problem on the layout uh, to hide it in <laughs> different places and corners to get uh, special shots, uh, close-up shots, and etc. Right, let's uh, put the battery in it. Um, here's place for a memory card, so let's put in a memory card the other way around. No, nope, like this. Okay. And let's uh, switch it on. The lens is coming out. Um, well, the same as my other one. Um, different uh, positions here. You can shoot manual, you can shoot automatic, programmed. Um, looks great. Um, here's a button for video and here's a button for taking pictures. Um, let's go to the menu. So you can set the language, uh, the time, um, lots of things. Um, let's first see the functions for photo. Um, as you can see, there's um, lots of settings. I'm not going to try them all at the moment. As you can see, these are 4K photos, self timers, uh, HDR you can use. Okay, most interesting for me, let's go to the video settings. Um, well, as you can see, there's filter settings, there's uh, 4K, snap movie record format. The record quality is now in full HD 60 pictures 60 frames per second so that should solve my issue with uh, moving trains that are getting unsharp. Um, then there's uh, lots of different settings I'm not gonna change that for the moment just to try a first shot uh, first try first test as is um, zoom level etc um, you can change language and um, because there are lots of languages let's take a look yeah there's uh, there's lots of languages you can choose from um, for my friends from the former soviet union no russian but i guess that's because i bought this version in Belgium and um, I think if you buy a version in Russian then there should be Russian language as well. Um, so this um, looks promising. Um, there's no information about the microphone but on the specs before buying I saw it was a stereo microphone. So let's um, try it and make a few shots on the layout. So as you can see I can change the focus from the landscape in the background uh, to the locomotive or even parts of the locomotive I often film on the layout the camera you just put somewhere in a corner where I can get uh, good shots um, let's try now if it's possible to fix the focus problem because on my old camera if something was in the foreground uh, it often lost focus and um, the things that were happening in the background were not sharp so let's see if we can fix that now so I've put the focus now on the background and indeed the trees in the foreground are less sharp and the background looks crisp 
let's try it with the train passing by let's record that was not exactly what i meant to happen okay let's try that with the train passing by And let's check if it's um, in focus. Yeah, that train looks sharp. Let's try in different corners. This one is a difficult one because um, it's nearby the window. And so it's a very dark corner. It's um, not very well um, it's, it's darker than the rest of the Leod as you can see here yeah? and um, the light is is opposite to the lens so that's always a, a bit of a problem um, so let's try uh, how it can make uh, videos here What I like about this type of camera for filming model railways is that it is, uh, well, quite compact and it's possible to put it in all kind of corners on the layout. Um, and you don't need a stand as you would need with a phone um, that would fall over. And this one um, stands just by itself. It's um, quite uh, interesting, quite handy. So we'll put it in uh, a few more corners and do some testing. This corner is always interesting. I just remove the trees here and um, put it here. It gives me a very nice uh, shot uh, nearby the wood. Okay. One of my favorites um, also is filming from the village um, as, as you would well, just walk inside the village uh, on the village streets and then um, have a view on the train passing by. Um, I th I like that. Well, the old camera didn't give the possibility to fix the focus on, on one or another point. So for instance here I can fix the focus on that part and then let's just see how it looks and then one of my favorite shots is this one I just removed the house that was here this one and then um, I have the possibility to take this shot with the uh, the other village house and then the wood in the background. As you can see, this one is not sharp, it's tree, and that's how I like it to be. Uh, let's put the focus in the background and have a train passing by. Okay, let's now take a few pictures as well um, and there especially I want to get things in focus on the distance um, which um, is not always that easy uh, with the camera that, that hasn't got a controllable focus. Let's try. So I will show you now how I work. So uh, the camera is on the tripod here. I want to make a close-up shot of the station. <clears throat> so let's first zoom in but then as you can see it's not sharp yet then I take the focus point and put it at these figures and immediately these get sharp and the further surroundings are unsharp 
So let's take the picture. It is a nice system to get focus on something in the distance as well, but not too easy because for instance, I here want to put focus on the lady there, but she's further than the tree and the water tower. And um, well, it seems the camera cannot exactly get the focus on her. However, this one should be easy. So I am taking the focus to this uh, gentleman here on the control post. And let's take a picture. I have also taken the camera outside to test its uh, capabilities in the open air. And the first thing is to zoom in um, to a certain point in video movies. As you can see, the zoom lens is great. However, the stereo microphone is built in, so there's no possibility to protect it with a wind cap. That's a bit of a disadvantage. Um, an external microphone connection would have been nice. So let's come to a conclusion then. Um, it is shooting video quite well. It's, uh, the sound is in stereo, it has a stereo microphone, which is very interesting, it gives a more realistic uh, impression of this uh, model railway. Um, then, um, as far as taking pictures, uh, the manual focus is uh, interesting. Uh, but I must say, um, there is sometimes a bit of a problem when objects are very close to each other with a different depth, with a different uh, distance. And then sometimes it can't uh, get the focus just precisely there where I want it. Um, so, as you saw, the woman was just um, well about 10 centimeters further than the tree and the water tower and I couldn't get the focus on the woman. So all in all a very good camera, it's uh, not top of the range, it's a uh, lower mid-range camera um, as far as the price range is concerned. I am now using this camera for a few months and based on my experience I am not sure if it's the best of best cameras but I am quite satisfied with it. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye bye.